Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. It's no secret that both military and commercial aircraft represent very expensive pieces of aviation equipment. For instance, the F-35 has a price tag of more than $80 million per plane, while a civilian Boeing 747-8 Intercontinental costs as much as $418 million. Clearly, if even one of these aircraft were to be damaged or destroyed, it would represent a huge loss to either the taxpayers or the airline. Now imagine losing an entire hangar of aircraft. In today's feature, we will explore some of the steps private and government organizations are taking to protect their airborne investments from potentially catastrophic fires. Military aircraft hangars are not only unique in that they can contain billions of dollars worth of equipment, but there is often highly combustible jet fuel or even military armaments present. This can make even small fires a serious safety hazard. Unfortunately, planes also have large bodies and wings which create barriers to traditional fire suppression techniques by blocking any water released from the ceiling. This is why the Air Force, National Guard, and other branches of the military have made major investments in foam fire suppression technology. These specialized foam systems are usually custom designed to fit each specific hangar space. This ensures that they can quickly put out fires while making allotments for unique barriers or equipment. Rather than using water alone, these systems use a special extinguishing agent that foams upon contact with any surface. As the foam expands upward, it pushes the flames away from the ignition source, causing them to extinguish. The foam also provides a barrier to keep oxygen from reigniting the blaze, while the water portion disperses the accelerant. Though foam fire suppression systems are designed quite similarly to a traditional sprinkler system, their function is very different. Upon activation, the stored water is pushed through a network of pipes. Here, the water is mixed with the foaming agent at the last possible second before discharge. At that moment, large bucket-sized nozzles in the ceiling disperse the foam across a wide area of the hangar. Once it makes contact with a surface, the foam immediately begins to expand, suffocating the blaze. In one NASA test, the 4802 High Foam Expansion System covered 90% of the floor in 60 seconds and reached three feet in depth in under two minutes. The test was a success. It was a pass. Uh, they hit the criteria for both of the time marks that we were looking for. The high expansion foam system it would be for a fairly rare scenario, some sort of large fuel leak from an aircraft and uh, it igniting on in fire. Though foam fire suppression systems are an excellent solution to the unique problems posed by airplane hangar fires, they are far from perfect.
Their primary issue is how often these systems are accidentally discharged due to human error or computer glitches. In one famous false alarm at a National Guard base in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 10 Black Hawk helicopters were buried in over eight feet of foam. The foam expanded so quickly that it affected the aircraft both in the hangar and hundreds of feet away, and the average cleanup cost per misfire event is estimated at $20,000 to $40,000. Despite these expenses, most organizations tend to agree that the benefits of foam fire suppression systems largely outweigh the cons. That's why both civilian airports and military installations are also investing in mobile foam systems. These systems are powered by small fire trucks with crew members using handheld hoses to extinguish the flames at the source. Indeed, the FAA requires all airports, both private and public, to have aircraft rescue and firefighting services on hand. On a normal day, we get told we have to be here anywhere between 24 and 72 hours. It's our job to be ready when everyone else is least ready. When we respond to calls, everyone's gonna carry a tool. Usually it's a ax or a halligan tool. At that point, they'll carry that to the aircraft. When it comes to aircraft rescue and fire suppression, there is no organization facing more unique challenges than the U.S. Navy. Not only are aircraft carriers completely isolated from any potential assistance, but an out-of-control fire could mean the loss of thousands of lives and billions of dollars in equipment. Since the 1960s, U.S. carriers have been using aqueous film forming foam, or AFFF, to protect the planes and vehicles in the hangar bay. Like those installed in hangars back on land, these shipboard suppression systems release foam from the ceiling in the event of a fire, spreading at a 0.06 gallons per minute per square foot. Carriers also use a system known as HSSE, or Health, Safety, Security, and Environment, in order to maximize protection for both personnel and equipment. These stipulations contain a variety of shipboard rules and methods of conduct. They include wearing safety helmets, goggles, and life jackets when directed, but extend to specific fire prevention rules as well. This includes ensuring that all personnel is aware of where fire suppression systems are and how they operate. Keep stepping. Hey, keep stepping. Fire drills for both the cabin and deck are common aboard ships in order to ensure everyone is briefed on the proper procedures. There's no mistaking the fact that foam has become the new water when it comes to hangar fire suppression. Foam is ideal because it can more readily handle fires stemming from aircraft fuel and other combustible agents. It also expands quickly, covering areas that water might not reach due to the large fuselages and wings of parked aircraft. Foam is also helpful outside of hangars, where it can be quickly utilized by mobile aircraft rescue and firefighting services.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.